We were getting ready to finish up season one in our NIU dynasty as we would be playing the last three games of the season here in this episode. The Huskies still had a chance at making the MAC championship as they were sitting at number three in the conference and we had a gem three-star recruit Daquan Hunter visiting today here in our matchup against Akron. So let's get down to the field and see how the Huskies do here at home in MAC. -tion. It wasn't looking like they would be off to a hot start as Ben Finley would find the junior Alex Adams who would take this all the way to the crib for a house call for the Zips. And facing a fourth down, Coach Brooks wanted to stay aggressive in this game and match that touchdown on the board. As that decision would pay off and Ontario Brown would find the end zone for the Huskies where the defense would come out, step up, and force Ben Finley to throw the ball away on third down. After getting a defensive stop, NIU had a chance to take the lead over Akron, but after being stopped just short, they would settle for a field goal. Finley in the Zips offense was moving the ball back down the field to start the second quarter where he would find Alex Adams again for a touchdown and it seemed momentum had shifted in favor of Akron as they would come out and get a defensive stop against the Huskies. This drive could give Akron a chance to go up by 11 but it would be the Finley to Finley connection but it would be Jacob Finley picking off Ben Finley taking this to the house for an NIU pick six but the Zips would waste absolutely no time and would get right back into the end zone. Needing another stop here it would be Jordan Hansen this time coming away with an interception for the Huskies defense and he would take this back for the second pick six of the day for the NIU defense where Akron now found themselves down by three to the Huskies and were trying to score before half. On second and three Akron was in striking range as Finley would go across the middle and find his tight end Max Wisner and the Zips would take the lead back over NIU as they would get a stop here on third and goal forcing the Huskies to settle for a field goal who would still be down by one. If they wanted a chance to win this game they needed to get a stop here as they wouldn't be able to keep Akron out of the end zone but the Huskies weren't down and out yet as Ethan Hampton would get them into the end zone where they would have to try to go for a two-point conversion to tie it up but would fail. They desperately needed a stop on this possession now as Ben Finley would find Faison Wilson who had no one in front of him and would take it to the house for an Akron touchdown. But this game was starting to get interesting as Ethan Hampton would find the freshman Kyle Thomas for a touchdown. With two minutes to go in the game it looked like Akron could seal this but Charles Kellum would put the football on the ground and NIU would recover cover it as all Ethan Hampton had to do was get his team down the field and into field goal range and with one more handoff to Ontario Brown he would help center the ball and move it upfield where that would set up an opportunity for a game winning field goal and the Huskies would knock it down as they walk away with the victory despite giving up almost 600 yards in total offense 497 of which came from quarterback Ben Finley for the Zips that win would land three star cornerback to Quan Hunter who was on a visit this week and him signing his letter of intent would boost NIU up to the 73rd ranked recruiting class in the country currently. With two games left in the season, NIU had moved up into the second position in the MAC conference standings. And even though they were tied with Buffalo, they still had the tiebreaker over them from their victory earlier this season. So that meant we still needed to get a tiebreaker over Miami as we were tied with them for second as well. And this game would give us the opportunity to do that. The offense wasn't off to a great start as we'd go three and out to start the game. But our our defense would step up for us and force the Red Hawks to punt on their first possession as well. Third and seven, we had finally made our way inside Red Hawk territory, but Ethan Hampton would go across the middle and that would be picked off by the Miami defense. That would give Brett Gabbert and the Miami offense a chance to take the first lead of the game today as he was moving around but would put the football on the ground we wouldn't be able to cover and Miami would scoop and take this to the house. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. We had a stop, forced the fumble, but couldn't pick it up and halfback Kenny Tracy would recover it for the Red Hawks and it ended up being a scoop and score for them. Because of that, we now found ourselves down seven nothing to Miami and after being stopped on third and goal, we would have to settle for a field goal. At least we finally got our first points on the board for the day, but Miami was driving and Jacob Finley would come away with the interception for us to get the stop. A big time play from the defense but offense wouldn't be able to capitalize. So that would give Miami another opportunity deep in our own territory but we would force a fumble and this time we would recover as it would be linebacker Jake Gassaway 
who would pick this up and it would be our turn to score off of a fumble on Miami. That would give us a 10 to 7 lead over them and the very next possession it would be defensive end Kevin Session coming away with an interception. That's normally not a position you see coming away with interceptions on defense and it would set us up with an opportunity to score before halftime but Cannon Woodhill would miss another field goal for the Huskies. Miami would be given an opportunity to tie it up as they would knock home their own field goal but the freshman Kyle Thomas would give us the lead right back and then it would be Jacob Finley again with another interception. That pick six would put us up by two possessions over Miami and he would almost get another pick here as that third down stop would give us a chance to extend this lead as Ethan Hampton would go on the run and he would find Jake Applegate for a touchdown. And with one last stop here on fourth and 19, this game would come to an end and we would get the big time win over Miami on the road, which would now keep us in second place of the MAC conference, but we're still tied with Buffalo, so we needed them to lose their final game of the season and we needed to win. Headed into the last week of the season, this is what the projected college football playoff bracket looked like, and we were currently slated to play Coastal Carolina in the Cure Bowl. In this last game of our season, we had three-star right end Jamie Sombrilo visiting, as well as three-star halfback Zach Jaredis. So let's get down to the field for our last game of the season and see if we can get a win at home against Central Michigan. The situation was perfectly clear for us this week. Win this game and we would find ourselves in the MAC Championship, as we were currently tied for second place with Buffalo and had the tiebreaker over them. If we won this game at home today, it would not matter what Buffalo did in their last game, as even if we both won and had the same conference record, we had that tiebreaker over them. Despite needing to win this game, our offense was not off to a great start so far today, as we were still looking for our first points in the first quarter and we would miss this field goal. Thankfully, that looked like it was going to change as Devontae O'Malley would force a fumble and Kevin Session would jump on it, giving us prime field position to put the first touchdown on the board of the day. The Chippewas were looking to strike back as they had an improbable field goal attempt here, but we would give them a brand new set of downs with a running into the kicker penalty. But despite that, our defense would stand strong and get a third down stop. They would send their field goal unit out for another field goal, but it would be a fake as Tristan Matson would take it inside the five. And that fake would help set up an easy touchdown for the Chippewas as Stephen Bracey Jr. would find the end zone for them. We needed to respond after that, so we would go to the ground game with Ontario Brown. And our defense was stepping up for us big time as we'd take the Chippewas out of field goal range. As we would head into the second half with a 14-7 lead where our defense would continue to stuff them. Third and five here, deep inside Central Michigan territory, and Ethan Hampton would almost take a sack, taking us out of field goal range. But he would get that pass off in time, and Woodill would would drill this field goal. The defense was continuing to suffocate the Chippewas offense today in the second half so far, which would allow us to extend this lead to make it 24 to 7 over them. We would compound that lead here in the fourth quarter as on second and goal, Ethan Hampton would roll out to the right and he would find Andrew McElroy wide open for a touchdown. And all we would need is one more stop here on fourth and three as we would force the incomplete pass. And with this big win for the Huskies at home, they not only secured three-star halfback Zach Jardis and three-star right end. And Jamie Sembrilo, but they also secured themselves a spot in the MAC championship and season number one under Coach Brooks. Three-star middle linebacker Jorge Ferboni and four-star tight end Kevin Shaughnessy were the last two recruits on our board that hadn't signed, but hopefully next episode, a win over Toledo in the MAC conference championship could help get them to sign on the dotted line and commit to NIU.